I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. When it comes to Donald Trump, he has plenty of opposition. What would you do if Trump started to use one of your songs at his rallies? Because that I, happens a lot. I'm surprised he hasn't. Surprised right. he hasn't <laughs> on, on the one hand, I'd be afraid of sort of fueling the media by saying anything about it. But on the other hand, I would go choke his ass out. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> The, pro the deeper problems are systemic, and speaking up against those problems in your vocation, whether you're a talk show host or a guitar player, I think is the important thing. In the music space, Rage's Tom Morello is one of them. Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can I, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to That's answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> The way the former president conducts himself is abysmal. So says this great. Make America great again is code. Yeah. No, it's not code. It's blatant. <laughs> Have you seen that rally? Yeah. Man, it, it made me not want to wear red, white, and blue for a while. That rally. Yeah. The things that were being said. Those t-shirts. I mean, I call them the bumper stickers. Because that's how they talk. Just like bumper stickers. But you trust him? Right. You trust him. But I'm praying for our nation right now. I'm praying for the human condition. I'm praying for women. Yeah. I'm praying that we make some better decisions. The legendary Pharrell Williams. Why do we want these people from, quote, all these countries here? Mr. Trump was referring to African nations and Haiti before suggesting the U.S. should have more people from places like Norway. And who could forget this moment? It's disappointing and it's hurtful. It really is hurtful, more so. Like, it, everyone feels anger. But, but after the anger, it's really hurtful because, like, you're like, looking down on a whole population of people. And you're so misinformed because these places have beautiful people and have beautiful everything. Yeah. Um, and it's just, like, this is the leader of the free world speaking like this. But on the other side, this has been going on. Yeah. This is how people talk. We treat people like human beings. New York's own Jay-Z did not. You see it everywhere with Trump, right? There's always a lot of gold around Trump. I mean, think about it. He used to host a TV show called Gold Rush. You know, inside a lot of his casinos, they're now all bankrupt and, and out of his hands. But gold was a common interior design element in a lot of the Trump casinos. It really popped up for me most recently during the Republican convention when he came up to speak. The main guy. The main guy, Donald Trump. When he got up there on stage, he was surrounded by huge gold columns on either side of the jumbotron. There were gold steps leading up to the podium, and then his lectern itself was outlined in gold. And there's good reason for it, as the late great musician Tupac Shakur explains. Usually, you're born to a dynasty or an empire, right? Our family crest was cotton, you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, it's like the only thing we can really leave behind is culture, is music, you know? And, and every day, every little thing you do, it's such a, gimme, gimme, gimme! Everybody back off. You know, everybody's like, you taught that from school, everywhere, big business. You want to be successful? You want to be like Trump? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Push, 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 push. Step, step, step. Crush, crush, crush. It's too much money here. I mean, nobody should be hitting Lotto for 36 million and we got people starving in the streets. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have because we won the state. Why wouldn't you want to find the right answer, Brad, instead of keep saying that the numbers are right? So look, uh, can you get together tomorrow? And Brad, we just want the truth. It's simple. And, uh, and everyone's gonna look very good if the truth comes out. It's okay, it takes a little while, but let the truth come out. The and the, tr the real truth is I won by 400,000 votes at least. So, so what are we going to do here, folks? I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. This was also fodder for a globally recognized ban. The president played a very good point in his speech the other night. If only the British had held on to the airports. <laughs> Rolling Stone's frontman Mick Jagger would also troll Trump, even saying at one point during a show in June of 2024, we wanted to play wild horses. All we needed was 11,000 more votes. There's a more important vote coming up in November. Don't forget to vote in that one. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. 
We have no choice. We have no choice. Preposterous, but this is his legacy. I think it was a real mistake that the U.S. chose to fire missiles into the Middle East. I think that, that was a huge mistake. And I think that it's, it's very important that the United States start to look towards nonviolent means of resolving conflicts. Those bombings that took place in the Middle East were thought of as a retaliation by the terrorists. And if we thought of what we did as retaliation, certainly we're going to find more retaliation from people in the Middle East, uh, from terrorists specifically, I should say, because most Middle Eastern people are not terrorists. And I think that's, that's another thing that America really needs to think about is our racism racism that comes from the United States towards Muslim people and towards Arabic people and that's something that has to stop and the United States has to start respecting people from the Middle East in order to find a solution to the problem that's been building up over many years. One that the Beastie Boys specifically spoke out against. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light and I think you said that has him in check but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. Right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. It's hard to imagine people voting for this again. You know, the world has been sort of moving toward this or in a scary direction of where um, we've started to play with this sort of l lack of reality and questioning science and questioning truth and uh, you know alternative facts and these kind of things and it's pretty scary and I think the age of reason is being you know challenged by um, an age of ignorance and you know as if they are equal partners it's very dis it's disappointing you know because it you just th this sort of uh, disregard for science and disregard for the health of people, a disregard for even his own, I suppose it's his, 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 his greatest followers. It's just uh, playing by your own rules to a, taking to a, to a really absurd and kind of insulting, obviously selfish um, degree. I, uh, I, I get, yeah, it makes, it, it's, it just makes me think he's not really, he doesn't have much interest in the truth or in helping out uh, with the with the struggle that people have and being blatant about it. Dave Matthews was spoken out not just against Trump, but also the mass suffering of Palestinians at the behest of Benjamin Netanyahu preached on CNN about Trumpism. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. Yeah, And when Kanye showed where his loyalties lie. And when I see him uplifting Trump, which is, let's make no mistake, because we don't have the luxury to mince words at this point. Trump is a fascist, bruh. He's not just a racist. He's a violent racist. He's a xenophobe. He's a homophobe. He hates women. And he's a fascist. We've seen what fascism does to the world. We can't afford to coddle anyone who enables or uplifts that, no matter how much I love them. I love Kanye West to death. You know, I love Kanye West to death. But because he spoke in a public space and uplifted Trump, I feel like because I'm someone who he has also said publicly that he respects, I have a unique position to be able to say something in a way that maybe he can hear it in a way that he won't hear it from other people. When he uplifts Trump, he's speaking, he's, he's harming and really hurting. He's hurting us. Not in an abstract, but he's really hurting us on a literal level because there are groups that are going to be marginalized. Former friend Talib Kweli spoke on it as well. Hey, I appreciate you watching. Now, if you can, please do become a channel member by going to youtube.com slash TYT sports and clicking the join button. If that's too much for you, you can just go to tyt.com slash join to become a member. It helps all of us out here at the Young Turks and keeps our network afloat. In addition, you could follow me on my socials on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate the love. Have a great day.